What's up, everybody? Alex here. Welcome back to another episode of What's On Tap Weekly Recap uh, here. Hope everybody's having a good Friday uh, and uh, going to have a good weekend, at least here in Ohio. Uh, tomorrow it is supposed to be, tomorrow means Saturday, depending on when you're watching this. It's supposed to be like 67 degrees as a high, going to get cold. It's concert night. I'll talk about that, I'm sure, on Sunday. But uh, yeah, so what are we getting into on this uh, Friday? Went local, had a couple of things to get into and didn't want to get into anything too heavy because this might just be a one and done for me. But uh, we're going to go with Land Grant out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, Skull Session, a Vienna Lager. 12 ounces, 355 milliliters, 5.2% alcohol by volume. It is a lager, obviously. Bready, toasty, and crisp. Um, if you're a beer person, going down the rabbit hole of looking at what different lagers mean from different parts of the world, especially when you start getting into Pilsners and what's the difference between a regular Pilsner and a Czech Pilsner and all these different things, uh, and you know, what makes a Vienna lager a Vienna lager. And this should come out not looking like a Bud Light. Uh, even though a Bud Light is a lager. Uh, this should come out, as it said, if it's saying it's bready and toasty, it should come out a little bit darker. Not quite as dark as like a red ale or a Bach or something like that. Um, but this should come out, I would guess, somewhat of a, not quite brown, maybe copper-ish, but uh, we'll see. Or I'll make myself look like an idiot. It's, it, it might be almost a roasted blonde. Let's go with a roasted blonde and see how that goes. There we go. Okay, yeah. We'll take Roasted Blonde, how about that? Yeah, I mean, see, th that's that's Vienna Lager there. You see how that is darker than what you're going to get, you know, in like your macro lager. I mean, they're both lagers, but what gives it that sort of color is the malt base. When it says toasty, the malts are slightly toasted. That's what gives it that darker color. Uh, opposed to like a stout where they're so toasted that they're almost pretty much burnt. That's what gives the dark malts those uh, colors, whether they're toasted or just using dark malt. But regardless, yeah, we'll go with like a, a burnt blonde. How about that? Burnt blonde. Yeah, I mean, smells like lager. You know, craft lagers do have that little bit of... Um, sulfury type vibe to them if your nose can pick up on it. It's not off-putting, it's just one of those things that they just sort of carry with it. That's a lot of what I'm getting here. Not too much toast. It smells like a beer. Hey, let's get after it. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, big time toast on the back. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's delicious. That is like perfect, um, almost teeter into Oktoberfest type realm. Again, not quite as dark, but getting there. Um, and both lagers. So we'll spend up too much more time on the beer for the non-beer people. But um, yeah, it's definitely, you know, a lager. It's light. It's crushable. But also it does have that toastiness to it more so than obviously like a macro, you know, whatever. Yeah, it definitely, it's a perfect, ooh, good snap of bitterness on the end. Okay, it's like the perfect transition from like fall into Oktoberfest. I don't know if that makes sense, but we're doing it. Cool. Thank you, Lane Grant out of Columbus, Ohio. Cool. Let's get into the week. So it was kind of a funny week. Um, I had the long weekend, which is great, which would typically mean a lot of listening. But funny enough, I received a letter handwritten letter on my door from my neighbor. I'm like, keeping it down. They might hear me. That said I was playing my music too loud. <laughs> in, in, in four years that I've lived here and been playing music, that's never happened before. So I got like a little bit self-conscious about it. I don't want to be a bad neighbor. You know, I, this is why apartment living, you know, sucks. But uh, hey, such is life when you don't make enough money to buy a house. So, um, you just spend all your money on records. So I was a little bit like, you know, and then listening very quietly and I was doing some streaming, just, it was a mess. But the point is, let's start Monday because Monday was Labor Day 
had the day off and there were two things going on. A, I was going to go down to Spoonful Records, which is my local in downtown Columbus that does Dollar Mondays. And then Lost Weekend Records, which is one of the classic stores here in town, was doing their annual Labor Day record swap, which is basically just like a mini fair, right? They got about seven or eight local vendors who set up and sell records, right? So I did both of those. Um, first stop, though, was Spoonful, and I picked up three records uh, and spent a grand total of 10 bucks. I picked up two dollar records that are absolute bangers and one record for eight bucks. So I want to get into those right now. This is I love this band. I love this band to death. They're pro, not even pro, they're a top 10 band for me. They might be creeping into top five category, but I'll be honest with you. I'm so tired of hearing the hits. I don't need to hear the hits anymore at all. And this is a greatest hits. The deep cuts from this band are so much better. Uh, the earlier career is what really, really gets me the first four records, but for $1 in pretty damn good shape too. Queen's greatest hits. So, you know, <laughs> Again, it was a buck. Disc plays great. Um, you know, you have everything that you've heard a gazillion times, with the exception of flashes on here. Don't hear that much. Um, keep yourself alive. You don't hear as much. Uh, as much as, you know, something like Under Pressure, Fat Bottom Girls, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody, all that type of stuff. So, I mean, this was a dollar holler, so, like, I got no qualms with it. But uh, funny that typically... A greatest hits like that, I'm not typically interested in, but for a dollar, why not? This was a fascinating one. I just made the assumption that this thing was beat to hell. Um, got it home, played it, and it played really good. I can't believe this was a dollar. I don't know if they just got lazy and didn't want to clean it. I, I don't know. <laughs> one dollar, Pink Floyd. Wish you were here. You can tell the sleeve's in pretty good shape. A little bit of tape right there, but like, sleeve's in great shape. See a little barcode here? So I knew this was a reissue right immediately upon seeing it. Turns out this is an 80, 1980 reissue. The Discogs meeting on this goes for, it's like 28 bucks. And again, I just assumed the disc was ripped, but uh, it actually played incredibly well. So um, I already have an original of this record. I don't know if this is gonna be a keeper. I haven't done like a side-by-side, -side, whatever. Um, you know, maybe I'll be a maybe I'll be a VC jerk and, you know, flip this record for a, uh, 10 bucks or something, you know, and then go buy myself some more Chipotle, you all know. And the third record I picked up there was one I actually paid up for. Those who know me, huge Power Pop fan. Um, you know, great connection to the band Big Star. Got a chance to see the Big Star Quintet um, a couple of months ago now with Emma over A Vinyl O. She did an amazing video kind of documenting that experience. So I have loved Big Star, Alex Chilton, you know, that whole sort of family. And before he was in Big Star, he was actually in a band that more people probably knew about than Big Star um, at the time. And that was the Memphis sort of blue-eyed soul rock and roll group, the Box Tops. Um, they put out, I think, maybe four or five records with Alex um, during the mid to late 60s, uh, early 70s. And then he would go on and, and, and do the Big Star thing in the early 70s. Um, but I had seen this. This is Dimensions. I believe this was their third record from 1969. But what got me about this was the things that I'm a sucker for. And that's that it was a DJ promo. Had the promo on it. Of course, I had to check the label. White label promo. And, you know, gave this listen. And, you know, it's it's great. It's good Memphis rock and roll blue-eyed soul. It's Alex Chilton, man. It's good stuff. They do a, well, I will say... I feel like everybody's done a really good cover of this, but they do a really good cover of I Shall Be Released. Bob Dylan, the band, you know, so forth and so on. But uh, a good sort of combination of some originals they got on here as well as some covers as well. But uh, yeah, I'm a sucker for a promo. Anytime I can get a promo and it's a good price and for eight bucks, man, what a deal that was. So from there, I went up to Lost Weekend to uh, check, out the, uh, check out the vendor, see what they were having. See if I can get anything. I've gotten some good stuff from some certain people before. You start to get to know these people. You know what they carry. You know what condition the stuff is in. You know if they're willing to move a little bit. Um, and so I got two records. One of these records was priced at 30 and the other was priced at 10 And I, I was able to get both of them for 20 So um, the cheaper record first, uh, sorry jazz hats, but we're going with it. And that is the Modern Jazz Quartet. Concord. Um, so this is one of the earliest modern jazz quartets. This is when they're still on prestige records. And so for the label people out there, uh, it is on that yellow fireworks prestige label. 
And, you know, this was marked at 10 bucks, which, it, you know, it's not an overly valuable record for being on prestige. You know, most of the modern jazz quartet stuff isn't. In fact, if you're someone who's interested in getting into jazz, I think this is some really accessible stuff. But you do have to like the vibraphones. It's Milt Jackson on the vibes, John Lewis, Percy Heath, and then Connie Kay on drums. This was, I believe, the first record that Connie Kay came in on drums on. But uh, good vibes only, as I say. Big, heavy vibe playing. But um, being a part of sort of the package deal... Um, what this other record was what I was really going for. And, you know, I'm a prog head, man. I know I'm a prog head. And as I said before with promos, this is a band from Scotland. Um, and, yeah, added to, like, the Scottish bands. You know, Nazareth. Donovan? Donovan is Scottish. Anyway, we'll keep it going. Name of this band is... Beggar's Opera. Um... Super prog band. Uh, this came out in 1970. Uh, again, Scottish band. This is so, so, so heavily organ. I mean, you're talking like big time organ, more so than even like the nice, you know, Emerson, like a Palmer Keith Emerson stuff. So much organs going on in here. A really cool infusion of some old school classical music as well. Not a ton of vocals. There are some, but they more or less just sort of play like in these interludes. Um, but to me, you know, just as a, a, a prog nerd, this was like a really cool pickup. And of course, what made it great was the DJ promo. And this is the stuff I appreciate. Some people are like, I can't believe you would buy a record with writing on the cover. Well, if the Sharpie on the cover is the radio station, that's pretty dope. What's cool here too is actually, you know, I, I think Verve did this. So this is on Verve Records, which is also not a ton of, uh, you know, prog on Verve uh, at the time. It is a yellow verb, but it's a yellow for promotion only label. So, um, yeah, super impressed with that. If you like prog and you like heavy organ, that's what they call me, um, that's a cool record. So, was super happy to find that. Again, that was priced at 30 and that Modern Jazz Quartet was priced at 10 and I got both of them for 20 because the guy was like, this is my last event of the year. I don't, you know, just take whatever. So, who knows? Um, good stuff. Uh, shout out to... My boy, uh, Steve, I got this in a package yesterday as some VCLT from Steve at All the World's a Stage. And this is the only record I've listened to thus far. Just was busy last night um, and earlier today. But this is the only record I've listened to thus far. Uh, but he signed it to me because he's just a, a, a great guy. And I don't think he cared for the record as much. But that's okay. Like, one man's treasure is another man's trash or whatever. Um, Bloody Tourist from 10CC, a classic hypnosis cover. Apparently I was reading this was actually a cover that was presented to Genesis, and they said, no. Nah. Um, 1978, I think this is maybe their sixth record. This was the record right after their live album, I think. Deceptive Benz might have been right before that. Um, but I, I really love 10CC. I love how they are... Uh, so uncategorized in the type of music they are. You know, it's like this cool, sophisticated art pop sense, right? They fall in that art poppy category, but it's not like they sound like, you know, David Bowie. Um, they almost fall into like yacht rock, especially with like their big singles, perfect, amazing harmonies. You know, everybody is singing, everybody's writing. Um, and the production on these albums is just so clean and perfect. So um, this was sort of past their heyday a little bit, sort of on like the tail end of it, entering into the uh, late 70s here, but still a really great record. And Steve, just wanted to thanks a bunch for uh, sending that my way because uh, I needed it for the 10CC collection. Let's go to Coal Mine World, and uh, we'll actually do that twice here. Uh, I spun this this morning because it is just a perfect early morning. I know some people are like, you, you know, what does that mean? Like a good morning spin. Um, you know, getting into soul music and especially the sort of psychedelic instrumental soul. And this is a record that came out this year that I'm absolutely still loving. Karate Boogaloo, Hold Your Horses. Uh, yeah, a deep instrumental soul odyssey. That explains it. Um, Cool cover, too. Actually, uh, this was uh, the uh, Coal Mine Store exclusive. Very cool sort of uh, wax there. But also the sort of, uh, I don't know, the you know optical illusion style cover here. That apparently is only done for the very early ones. So, um, yeah, some very cool stuff going on here with the cover. But, uh, yeah, this is instrumental. These guys are from Australia, which is really cool. You're talking about an Australian instrumental soul band uh, on Coal Mine. So, um, yeah, uh, if you're a Coal Mine guy and you like that type of stuff, give that a whirl. Um, just amazing stuff. 
Uh, you know, my boy Sam St. John, uh, he was doing like a recent finds video recently and, and he was playing some Oscar Peterson and that just kind of inspired me um, to throw on some My Oscar Peterson, Oscar, Peter, tr Oscar Peterson Trio plays, 1964. Same trio here. I think that's, uh, what, Thig Pen and Ray Brown, maybe. Um, you know, what I love about Oscar Peterson is it's jazz trio stuff, man. It's just upright bass and Oscar just ripping on the piano. And uh, what I also love is these records are so inexpensive and accessible. Like if you want, you know, I think, especially in jazz world, we've gotten accustomed to thinking that like, it, well, I mean, this is true in record world period, but especially in jazz and some of these other more, um, I don't know, exclusive type genres, we'll call them. We, we've gotten said like, if it's not expensive, it's not good, right? Like if you can find, you know, think about these bands, like if you can find their records for cheap and it's not good. On the reverse, it's like, oh, if the records are super expensive, it, it means that they're, it's because they're so good. And that's not really how, you know, supply and demand works. So um, what I love is these Oscar Peterson Trio records are really pretty inexpensive. I think I got this from three bucks sometime a year ago or whatever it was. And it's just great stuff. So again, if you're looking to tiptoe into jazz world, Oscar Peterson Trio uh, is amazing, amazing stuff. Um, throw on some Neil Young by way of Neil Young's country record, right? How about that? Uh, comes a time. I really, really like this record. I've always loved uh, the, the title track, which was a bit of a hit, but the other one was um, a lot of love with uh, backing vocals and uh, and kind of duetted at least with um, Nicolette Larson. What a great song this was, or a great spin this was. Um, yeah, I mean, proper country, I, I guess for what, 1978 or whatever this was, I think uh, Rust Never Sleeps was after this, but you know, still not nearly as country as like, you know, Bird Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Like this feels still distinctly Neil Young. So um, yeah, still a great spin. Um, with Neil for sure. Let's go into some classic prog. You can never not spin this enough. Rush Hemispheres. Depending on the day, made my favorite Rush record. That trio, this trio with uh, Hemis Farewell to Kings, Hemispheres, Permanent Waves, my absolute favorite. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say 2112, but to me, 2112, its quality and how it's been revered is more based on impact of their career, not necessarily how great the record is. Um, and of course, Moving Pictures, this is perfect in every way, but I am really a big fan of this sort of trio of records with Hemispheres, Farewell Kings, and Permanent Waves. That's my favorite sort of trio there. Here's a band that some people might not think I'm a fan of, but I am, and it was just for a chill and relaxing morning in rainbows from Radiohead. Um, there are times this is my favorite Radiohead record. Admittedly, I guess I have not heard all of them, but in that sort of span going from the big, you know, popular things, basically the bends through this, um, I find myself just loving this more and more. And as I get into more music, you know, I've been listening to a lot more like dream pop or shoegaze or like those different things lately. It's, it's opened me up to more of this sort of approach to music which is just very different than what i'm used to listening to um and so yeah never uh you know never a bad time to spin radiohead in rainbows love that record well i was showing wild god from nick cave that came out last week and a lot of people are like look if you like that record if you're digging it you should check out the record he put out 10 years ago called push the sky away and it was on amazon for like 16 bucks so i did it and man i love this record too Jubilee Street, I think I've heard people talking about a fascinating little uh, narrative there. Um, Mermaids, what a beautiful song that is. And then the title track that closes the record, amazing. Actually, as of today, they just announced that Nick Cave is going to be here. Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds are going to be here in Columbus in, uh, the first week of May. Tickets go on sale for that uh, next week, and I am definitely going to go. And this is a rabbit hole that I cannot afford, but I'm going to have to find a way to figure out how to afford it because I am all in. Um, how about, uh, how about this? So a couple of uh, weeks ago, I showed, um, Cat Stevens, Is It So, which was like almost like this late seventies, like electronic type record. And it was coming off of the heels of kind of a mess of a, so of a concept record he put out. Well, I got this for a dollar too, and I wanted to hear it and it's called Numbers, and God, what a mess this is. I mean, I'm not going to say that I didn't enjoy it. It's Cat Stevens. It's, it's inoffensive. 
but you know, he he's trying to go like full, what is this called? Numbers, a Pythagorean theory tale. Okay, and it's got planets and numbers and these planets correspond with numbers and then it's it's it makes no sense and it is kind of a complete mess. Definitely after his heyday. And it makes sense that they would come back with is it so after this because this kind of just doesn't make any sense. But you know what? All things considered, for a dollar for Cat Stevens, I'll still take it, man. It's good for the collection. How about that? And then last and certainly not least, this is a happy release day to a coal mine artist who has become one of my favorites. Um, this is a hell of a record. I've spun this two or three times because I got it earlier this week. Um, and that is the latest from the Red Mask Mystery Man himself, Pale J. Um, yeah, you know, kind of um, falls into this sort of anonymity artist sort of situation. You know, is he uh, uh, or are they already someone that we know about, don't know about? Is it like a label thing? Is it just a random person? Who knows? But man, I mean, amazing, psychedelic, big falsetto soul going on here. Um, the textures and instrumentation on this record specifically just put you in a place. I was reading the write-up that was sort of done where they're just like, it's tough to describe um, you know, what you hear when you listen to Pale J. It's easy to describe what you feel and the place it puts you in. So, man, if you're, it, it's like, it's soulful. It's kind of ish R and B E, but not really. A little bit. I don't know. I don't want to say trip hop, but kind of. It, it's so hard to explain. But um, I'm just digging this record a lot. And the funny thing was, is that the first press of this through Coal Mine. Obviously, I got the Coal Mine exclusive uh, that has since sold out on this kind of dope color. But all of those also came with a. Um, is it in there? I'm not gonna pull it out. It comes with a signed inner, which is awesome. We love that. What's funny about that though, is I did not know that they all came with a signed inner. And so I had pre-ordered also from another place that specifically advertised that they are given away or that they had free inners. So here's the same album. This is by Seasick Records, exclusive pressing through them. They're out of uh, Alabama. So I have two copies of this. I have no use for this because I want it. So, if anybody's interested, well, let me know. We can work something out. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's cool stuff. So, yeah, Pale J, uh, amazing. And that album was released today. If you're into some old school soul, great falsetto textures, all type of stuff. So, um, there you have it. Hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, probably some light listening tomorrow because it's concert night. I am seeing Weezer with the Flaming Lips and Dinosaur Jr. tomorrow. Um, here in Columbus, sold out show. Could not be more excited for it. Um, it's going to be dope. So thanks everybody for watching. Hope everybody has a great weekend and we will see you on the next one. Cheers, y'all.